dear students uh, let us continue our discussion on uh, trigonometric functions in the last class we have seen uh, in which quadrant which trigonometric function is positive and which is negative all those things let us just recall so you know the rule a s t c see here uh, this is the first quadrant second quadrant third quadrant and the fourth quadrant in the first quadrant all the six trigonometric functions are positive in the second quadrant sin a is positive sin theta is positive and therefore its reciprocal cosecant theta is also positive and the remaining trigonometric functions are negative in the third quadrant tan is positive and hence cot is also positive remaining are negative in the fourth quadrant cosecant theta sorry cos theta and secant theta those two are positive and the rest of the trigonometric functions are negative okay so today in this class we shall solve problems where we are asked to find the sign of that trigonometric function sign means uh, whether it is positive sign or negative sign that is what we have to identify we are not asked to find the value of that trigonometric function the question is only to determine what is the sign is it positive or is it negative that is what we have to identify now okay let us take that question please just write down determine the signs of the following trigonometric functions determine the signs of the following trigonometric functions determine the signs of the following trigonometric functions first one sin 130 degree sin 130 degree okay so students here we have to identify first where this angle lies this angle lies in which quadrant that is what we have to identify so after identifying the quadrant in which it lies then for that given trigonometric function in that quadrant whether it is positive or negative that is what we need to check 130 degree look at 130 degree 130 degree as you know it is greater than 90 degree but less than 180 degree greater than 90 degree but less than 180 degree therefore it lies in the second quadrant if it is in the second quadrant and in the second quadrant what happens to sine sine is positive in the second quadrant so this is positive sine 130 degree is positive next question cos 175 degree cos 175 degree what about 175 degree 175 degree also lies in the second quadrant it is greater than 90 degree but less than 180 degree it lies in the second quadrant so in the second quadrant cos is negative hence cos 175 degree is negative okay next cosecant 220 degree cosecant 220 degree 220 degree 220 degree lies in the third quadrant 220 degree is greater than 180 degree but less than 270 degree so it lies in the third quadrant in the third quadrant tan is positive therefore cot is also positive and the remaining are negative here we are asked to find out cosecant so cosecant 220 degree is negative okay this sign indicates negative only so that is positive or negative that is what we are asked to find out next cos pi by 9 cos pi by 9 pi by 9 now they have given in terms of radians not in degrees so in terms of radians also you know between 0 to pi by 2 if the angle is between in terms of radians if it is between 0 and pi by 2 it is in first quadrant pi by 2 to pi second quadrant pi to 3 pi by 2 third quadrant and 3 pi by 2 to 2 pi will be fourth quadrant so pi by 9 pi by 9 is between 0 and pi by 2 pi by 9 is greater than 0 obviously and less than pi by 2 right therefore it is in first quadrant in the first quadrant all are positive so you can directly write that cos pi by 9 is positive so you can directly uh, identify that pi by 9 is between 0 and pi by 2 pi by 9 is clearly less than pi by 2 greater than 0 so first quadrant you can do that or if you are in confusion you can convert this uh, angle which is in radians you can convert this into degrees and then you can identify see if i want to convert it into degrees what do i do i'll write pi as 180 degree 
so it will be 180 degree by 9 180 degree by 9 is nothing but 20 degree 20 degree lies in first quadrant therefore cos 20 degree is positive okay so next tan 13 pi by 3 tan 13 pi by 3 what do we do shall i directly write this or uh, shall i convert it into degrees okay so in whichever way you want you can do it now i'll convert it into degrees because that is somewhat easier to understand so uh, i will write pi as 180 degree divided by 3 that's equal to tan so 3 ones are 3 60s are 60 13 into 60 that is 13 into 60 78 so 780 degree okay now look here 780 degree this is greater than 360 so where does it lie so what we do here is see always the initial line is the positive x-axis we start measuring the angle from here now i have to measure the angle 780 degree so what i do is i'll cover one full circle and i'll come back to the original position that means it will give you 360 degree so uh, from starting from here covering one full circle it will give you 360 degree you go again st starting from here so come back to this point so then 360 plus 360 that means 720 degree right and how much is left here 780 degree totally 780 degree so what is left 60 degree is left right so that means if i have to measure the angle 780 degree what i do is i'll start from here cover one full circle that will be 360 degree and again uh, rotate in the same way Co cover one more full circle full circle that will become 360 plus 360 720 degree and after that i will move 60 degree towards here so its position will be somewhere here okay this angle will be 60 degree so from this what we observe is that tan 780 degree is also same as tan 60 degree. that is because see the value of all these trigonometric functions are identified by the position of that point on a circle with the center at origin and radius r if you draw one circle by drawing by plotting those points on the circumference of that circle thereby drawing perpendicular say for example uh, you know i have showed that in the last class considering a circle by choosing a point on this if i select a point in the first quadrant all are positive so all those things you know so now how do we measure it say from here we will draw one perpendicular if this point is x comma y p of x comma y then this is x this is y this angle is theta this radius is r sin theta is equal to y by r cos theta is equal to x by r tan theta is equal to y by x etc all those things you have studied so this value of all these trigonometric functions is measured by considering the position of that point where that point is located so from identifying that point from there uh, we will find the values right so therefore whether it is 60 degree or 360 plus 60 that is 420 degree the position of the point will be same that is say instead of 60 degree if i give you 420 degree what do you do you'll start from here cover one full circle 360 degree add another 60 so you'll come back to this position only so even when it is 780 degree also what do we do we'll start from here cover one full circle 360 degree cover one more circle 720 degree and go another 60 degree so you will reach this point therefore the value of tan 60 degree is equal to tan 420 degree is equal to tan 780 degree is equal to tan 1140 degree that means i have added another 360 degree to it okay are you following this okay so now i'll tell you one point here that is for any trigonometric function not just for tan for any from the given angle from the given angle you can subtract a 360 degree then there is no change in the value of that trigonometric function okay you can subtract a 360 degree as many times as you wish there is no change in the value of that trigonometric function similarly for a given angle you add a 360 degree as many times as you wish there is no change in the value of that trigonometric function okay see here students i am not saying that 60 degree is equal to 420 degree that's not what I, my point 
what i am trying to tell you is that sin 60 degree is same as sin 420 degree same as sin 780 degree and uh, cos 60 degree is equal to cos 420 is equal to cos 780 similarly tan 60 degree equal to tan 420 degree that's equal to tan 780 degree and so on so though angles are not equal 60 degree is not equal to 420 degree but tan 60 degree is equal to tan 420 degree that means you can write one note here that is for any given angle in a trigonometric function for, for that given angle if we keep on adding 360 degree then there is no change in the value of that trigonometric function or if we keep on subtracting 360 degree from that angle then also there is no change in the value of that trigonometric function okay so i'll give you a much better explanation you'll understand it better when we go for further classes where i'll explain the periodic functions okay so there we will understand it better but as of now i think uh, with this much explanation you should be able to understand that for remember this point again for any angle if i add 360 degree once twice thrice or four times etc add 360 degree as many times as you wish there is no change in the value of the trigonometric function further from a given angle you keep on subtracting 360 degree 360 degree 360 degree as many times as you like then there is no change in the value of that trigonometric function is that clear okay so now to solve such problem what i advise you is if that angle is in between 0 and 360 degree then no doubt you know you can easily identify in which quadrant it lies suppose if the value is greater than 360 degree then what do we do you subtract by 360 degree or subtract by any multiple of 360 degree any multiple of 360 degree antandre 360 irabodu 720 irabodu 1080 irabodu 1440 degree irabodu okay so if you keep on subtracting 360 degree from uh, a given angle then there is no change in the value of the trigonometric function you know so if that angle is more than 360 degree you subtract by 360 degree or by any multiple of 360 degree so as to bring that angle between 0 and 360 degree and on the other hand if that angle is less than 0 if it is negative then what do we do then you add 360 degree add 360 degree once or twice or thrice or add so many times as many times as you wish here till you get that angle between 0 and 360 degree till then you keep on adding 360 degree or keep add any multiple of 360 degree okay so after that uh, we can identify whether it is positive or negative okay then uh, so what i do is 780 degree subtract 360 what i subtract 360 degree or subtract any multiple of 360 degree if i subtract 360 degree what happens we are going to get uh, if I, 780 minus 360 that will give you 420 degree again this is also greater than 360 degree subtract another 360 from it so it will become tan 60 degree tan 60 degree 60 degree is in first quadrant in the first quadrant all are positive so tan 60 degree is positive okay next cos of minus 20 degree cos minus 20 degree so i told you if that angle is negative then add 360 to it i'll add 360 so that will become cos of minus 20 plus 360 minus 20 plus 360 is equal to cos 340 degree cos 340 degree 340 degree is in which quadrant 340 degree is greater than 270 degree but less than 360 degree so it is in fourth quadrant in the fourth quadrant cos is positive in this way you can do it or else if you look at here this is the sorry this is x this is o initial line we are we are measuring minus 20 degree minus 20 means you are going in the clockwise direction so you will come here this angle is minus 20 degree right so this angle is minus 20 degree the position is fourth quadrant in the fourth quadrant cos is positive okay next sine of uh, minus 300 degree sine of minus 300 degree here 
I'll add 360 degree to it. Minus 300 plus 360 will give you sin 60 degree. Sin 60 degree is positive. First quadrant. Next. Cosecant 1200 degree. Cosecant 1200 degree. Is it positive or negative? We have to check. You can subtract. Uh, now this angle is greater than 360 degree. So what do I do? I will subtract 360 or I will subtract any multiple of 360. I will subtract 360 into 3. That is 1080. I will subtract 1200 minus 3 into 360. This is what I do. As I said, you can multi subtract 360 degree as many times as we like. Here I will subtract by 3 into 360. Hmm? Thrice 360. Now you might be thinking, sir, why 3 into 360? Why not 1 into 360, 2 into 360, 4 into 360? Yes, you can do that also. Nothing wrong with it. But uh, my intention, the whole idea behind this is uh, to get that angle between 0 and 360 degree. That I want. So I will multiply, subtract uh, by 3 into 360. Okay. So that will give you 1200 degree. 3 into 360 is 1080. 1200 minus 1080 will give you 120. Right. So cosecant 120 degree. 120 degree which quadrant? Second quadrant. In the second quadrant cosecant positive. Sign is positive therefore cosecant is also positive. Hence the answer is positive. Okay. Next question. Tan 735 degree. Tan 735 degree. 735 degree is uh, clearly greater than 360 degree. So you can subtract by 360 or you can directly subtract by 2 into 360 degree. 2 into 360 which is 720 that is equal to tan of 15 degree. Tan 15 degree positive or negative? Positive. 15 degree first quadrant. So, first. Okay. Next question is secant twenty five pi by six. Secant twenty five pi by six. Okay. So here you can either convert it into degrees. Or you can uh, now also in radians also you can identify. So as I said, you can subtract by any multiple of 360 degree or add any multiple of 360. That is in terms of degrees. When it comes to radians, you can add or subtract any multiple of 2 pi because 2 pi radian equal to 360 degree. You can add or subtract any multiple of 3, 2 pi. So I will keep this. Okay, I will do it in two ways. One is by using radians and the other one by using degrees. So, in terms of radians, if I want, you can subtract by any multiple of 2 pi. So, here uh, 25 pi by 6 minus, what do we do? I will subtract 2 pi. Okay. See, now clearly 25 pi by 6 is not between 0 and 360, not between 0 and 2 pi. This is greater than 2 pi. So, I will subtract 2 pi from this. So, what do you get? take it uh, 6 as the LCM. So, 25 pi minus 12 pi that will give you secant 13 pi by 6. Now, the question is whether this is in between 0 and 2 pi or not. Answer is no because if you have 12 pi by 6 that is equal to 2 pi. This is 13 pi by 6 so greater than 2 pi. So, if it is greater than 2 pi greater than 2 pi, you subtract another 2 pi from it. That will give you secant 13 pi minus 6 into 12 pi. This will give you pi by 6. Pi by 6 is in first quadrant. Pi by 6 is nothing but 30 degree. So, secant pi by 6, this is in first quadrant. So, this is positive. Okay. Now, here I subtracted 2 pi here and another 2 pi here. You can directly subtract 4 pi also. That is also okay. Directly if I subtract 4 pi, 6 into 4 pi, 24 pi, 25 pi minus 24 pi, you will get this answer, second pi by 6. Okay. This is if I keep it as it is in terms of radians. If you want to convert it into degrees and then do it, that is also possible. 
25 pi by 6 pi is 180 degree by 6 so this will give you 30 degree secant 25 into 30 what happens it will become 750 degree 750 degree clearly greater than 360 greater than 720 also so i will subtract 750 degree 720 degree from this so now 750 minus 720 that is 30 degree second 30 first quadrant positive okay so now i'll give you a few problems of uh, this kind you solve them you check whether it is positive or negative tan 3 pi by 5 cot 5 pi by 3 secant 18 pi by 5 tan 650 degree secant 1100 degree sin of minus 390 degree okay try these problems check whether they are positive or negative just try on your own don't uh, send that answer in the group okay now let's look at uh, our next set of questions Okay, write the question. Find the values of find the values of the other trigonometric functions. Find the values of the other trigonometric functions. of the specified angle of the specified angle in each of the following in each of the following first one sin a is equal to 7 by 25 a is greater than 0 less than pi by 2 okay understand the question here find the values of the other trigonometric functions of the specified angle in each of the following this is the first question see here they have given sin a you have to find the values of the other trigonometric functions that means you have to find out what is cos a, what is tan a, what is secant a, cosecant a and cot a. That is what you have to find out. Now, here it is given that a is in between 0 and pi by 2. a is between 0 and pi by 2 means a is in first quadrant. So, if a is in first quadrant, then all the others are also positive. Okay. Sin a or sin theta. How do we define sin theta? Sin theta is defined as, I will call this angle as a is defined as opposite by hypotenuse so here they have given 7 and 25 7 by 25 so the opposite side is 7 and the hypotenuse is 25 if this size 7 this is 25 what happens to this this is nothing but 24 you know pythagoras theorem 25 square is 625 625 minus 7 square which is 49 625 minus 49 will give you 576 which is the square of 24 right so, by Pythagoras theorem, you can write this as 24. Okay. Now, I will write the other trigonometric functions. Cos A. Here, see, you have to be cautious about this. Be careful about this. Because this indicates uh, in which quadrant it lies. Now, no problem because it lies in the first quadrant. Okay. In the first quadrant, all are positive. So, no problem. But if it is not in the first quadrant, then you have to check where, in which quadrant it is and uh, in that particular quadrant which and all are positive which are negative that you should be careful okay so now cos a cos a is defined as adjacent by hypotenuse 
so 24 by 25 then tan a tan a is equal to opposite by adjacent 7 by 24 the remaining three can be obtained just by taking the reciprocals also cosecant a that is nothing but the reciprocal of sin a so 25 by 7 secant a is the reciprocal of cos a so you get 25 by 24 and finally cot a cot a is the reciprocal of tan a so that is 24 by 7 okay did you understand now let's look at the next question cos theta cos theta they have given it is defined as minus 3 by 5 cos theta is equal to minus 3 by 5 theta is greater than pi by 2 but less than pi theta is greater than pi by 2 but less than pi okay greater than pi by 2 less than pi means it is in which quadrant it is in second quadrant in the second quadrant cos theta is negative that's why we have negative here okay now let us draw a right angle triangle right angle triangle let this angle be theta okay cos theta is equal to minus 3 by 5 they have given so minus 3 by 5 cos theta is defined as adjacent by hypotenuse this will be 3 this will be 5 now you might be thinking sir uh, here minus 3 is there here why did i write 3 that's length of the side it cannot be negative that minus 3 it only indicates the direction okay that minus this length is 3 only so if this is 3 this is 5 what about the opposite side that is nothing but 4 you know 3 4 5 they are pythagorean triplets 5 square minus 3 square 5 square is 25 3 square is 9 25 minus 9 is 16 and root of 16 is 4 right so 4 now sin theta sin theta is defined as opposite by hypotenuse opposite by hypotenuse theta is in second quadrant so sin theta is positive 4 by 5 only we have to read then tan theta tan theta is equal to opposite by adjacent that doesn't mean that you should write 4 by 3 okay we should write minus 4 by 3 only see this minus is not i am not saying that this side is minus 4 or this side is minus 3 it is not length is positive only but because theta is in the second quadrant where only sin theta and cosecant theta are positive remaining are negative therefore you have to write tan theta as minus 4 by 3 here and remaining things you can take the reciprocals and write cosecant theta is equal to 5 by 4 secant theta is equal to minus 5 by 3 and finally cot theta is equal to minus 3 by 4 okay next tan theta is equal to minus 5 by 12 tan theta is equal to minus 5 by 12 270 degree less than theta less than 360 degree 270 degree less than theta less than 360 degree that means theta is in which quadrant fourth quadrant 270 between 270 and 360 degree means it is in fourth quadrant in the fourth quadrant tan is negative they have given so theta i will take tan theta is minus 5 by 12 tan theta is defined as opposite by adjacent so this is 5 this is 12 when this is 5, this is 12, this has to be 13. Obviously, I don't think I have much explain about that. Okay. So, here tan theta is negative, theta is in third, fourth quadrant. So, only cos is positive and uh, secant is positive. Remaining are negative. So, sin theta. Sin theta is opposite by hypotenuse. So, it will become minus 5 by 3. Now, by looking at this thing, you might feel, sir, it is only 5 by 13. 5 by 13, but... Uh, theta is in fourth quadrant where uh, sin is negative so it will be minus 5 by 13 and cos theta is equal to cos theta in the fourth quadrant it is positive adjacent by hypotenuse it will be 12 by 13 tan already there cosecant reciprocal of sin theta so minus 13 by 5 secant theta the reciprocal of cos theta which is 13 by 12 and cot theta the reciprocal of tan theta that is minus 12 by 5 okay are you following this 
Okay, let's look at the next question now. Cot x is equal to minus 5 by 12. Cot x is equal to minus 5 by 12. X lies in second quadrant. See now in the question itself they have given for a second quadrant. In the previous case they had given theta is between 270 and 360. There you had to identify that. Uh, <coughs> sorry. There you had to identify that it is in fourth quadrant. Now they have al already given that it is in the second quadrant. Angle is x here. Okay. In the second quadrant, cot is negative. Let this angle be x. Cot x, cot theta defined as adjacent by opposite. So this will become 5, this will become 12. So automatically hypotenuse will become 13. Now sin x, it is x is in second quadrant. So sin x is positive. So, sin x opposite by hypotenuse 12 by 13. Cos x adjacent by hypotenuse 5 by 13. But because x is in second quadrant, cos x should be negative minus 5 by 13. Tan x is equal to my opposite of cot x. So, it will become minus 12 by 5. Then the reciprocal cosecant x that is equal to 13 by 12 and secant x is equal to minus 13 by 5. Okay, next. Cos x is equal to cos x is equal to minus 1 by 2 x lies in third quadrant cos x equal to minus 1 by 2 and x lies in the third quadrant third quadrant so in the third quadrant cos is negative here only tan and cot are positive consider right angle triangle let this angle be x cos x adjacent by hypotenuse so this will be 1 this is 2 okay so opposite side we have to find out that is equal to by using pythagoras theorem that will be nothing but opposite side will be root of 2 square minus 1 square that is root of 4 minus 1 that's equal to root 3 okay this will be root 3 now sin x sin x is equal to sin x is equal to what opposite by hypotenuse now x is in third quadrant where sin is negative so sin x is equal to minus root 3 by 2 cos x already we have tan x tan x is nothing but uh, opposite by adjacent root 3 by 1 it is in third quadrant x is in third quadrant so tan is positive root 3 by 1 that's equal to root 3 then cosecant x which is the reciprocal of sin x that will give you minus 2 by root 3 secant x that's the reciprocal of cos x that's equal to minus 2 and finally cot x which is the reciprocal of tan x cot x is root tan x is root 3 therefore cot x is equal to 1 by root 3 okay so such type of problems are important where uh, one of uh, one value will be given and you will have to find the value of the other five trigonometric functions okay in the next class we will solve some more problems of this kind where they will give you one of this and will not ask you to find the other they will give you one expression so if cot x equal to minus 5 by 12 and x is in second quadrant then find the value of uh, 12 cos x plus cot x divided by 5 sin x minus 4 tel, uh, tan x etc such expressions will be given where you will have to find the value of all those things. Okay. Uh, with this, uh, I will end uh, today's class. Thank you.